everybody! Today I am here to answer So Loud's Costume Quarantine 20 questions. Um, I thought it would be a nice way to introduce myself. Um, my YouTube channel started just as an extension of my Instagram to uh, have a platform for longer videos and tutorials, but I'm actually really enjoying it, so I think I'm here to stay. And I know there's a big overlap um, between the costumers who primarily are on Instagram and those who are on YouTube, but I thought this would be a good way to introduce myself to anyone who doesn't know me. Um, if you only know me as Dressed in Time, and I've had a blog Dressed in Time for almost a decade, my real name is Carolyn, and I live in Las Vegas with my husband and uh, three horses, two dog, four dogs, and two cats. <laughs> Losing track. Um, and I grew up here, but we actually don't live in town. We live in a rural area, and that is also why I'm quite new to YouTube. I didn't used to have the internet capability to stream. Um, recently, our internet company upgraded, so now I'm part of the 21st century. <laughs> but anyway, um, here we go with the questions. What was my first costume? And I have my laptop because I don't pretend like I can memorize these and my editing skills aren't that good to like put it all together. So we're reading them today. What was my first costume? Uh, so my mom used to throw an annual Mozart dinner party for his birthday and always wanted to dress up for it. Nobody else dressed up, but I was determined. So when I was in high school, I went to Joanne's and got white poly satin and peach poly taffeta, then some wire-edged ribbon, and a, I think it was a simplicity pattern, and I made an 18th century gown. And I still have pictures. I will pop one in right here. And, um, I remember it was, it was a fitted back with a stomacher, Velcro to hold in the stomacher. And I think it was sticky Velcro too, because I remember it not sticking and having to sew it down anyway. And uh, the crowning glory of that costume was I wore it with vintage 1930s peep toe velvet bedroom slippers. <laughs> so, I don't know, maybe I was going for like a mule, 18th century mule thing. I don't know. But it was, it was, it was a good costume and I, I still look back on it fondly. I have it somewhere. I'll have to share it one day. Uh, let's see. Uh, second question. What is your favorite costume you've made or what costume are you most proud of? That is really, really hard. I don't know if I have a favorite. I really love this gown. It's my 1902 Worth reproduction. And um, I wore the skirt in a video recently. So I thought I'd bring out the bodice, so the whole outfit could get some love. This is definitely a favorite. Um, but what I'm most proud of, probably um, a couple years ago for the Costume College Gala, I made a reproduction of a early Edwardian, about 1900, gown worn by the Tsarina Alexandra Fedorovna. And it's not my favorite dress ever. It's, it's kind of almost too, enormous <laughs> to have fun in. Uh, the train's got to be like 70 some inches long, though it did not stop me from dancing that night at Costume College. But uh, technically it was a milestone for me. I had to sew almost 30,000 sequins. I think I estimated it at 26,000 sequins onto this net that then had to become the dress. It was an overlay. And I'd never tackled anything that big or that time consuming or that long term before. And I did it and I wore it and it fit. <laughs> and I had fun in it. And um, it was a milestone for me because it meant that after that, any garment from history I look at, I go, I can make this. Might take a little longer than a year, that dress took about a year, um, but it can totally be done. And after that, I was like, I got this. 
so that was so that I'm quite proud of. What costume do you dream of making? I'm actually working currently on one of my dream gowns because, as I just said, I feel like I got this. Um, there is a gown at the Metropolitan Museum in New York. It's a 1780s white cotton gown embroidered all over in a lattice of vines with little flowers and the embroidery is done in flat metal plate. Um, I wanted to recreate this gown for years, for as long as I can remember. I went to see the Dangerous Liaison exhibit at the Metropolitan in 2004, five, something like that. And I remember seeing it there. And gosh, I wish I had like, I wish I could go back in time and see it in person again because I decided last year that I was gonna make it. There was a ball I potentially could have made it for. Um, everything got canceled, so it doesn't really matter now, but I wouldn't have been able to get it done in time. The metal plate embroidery takes a long time, but it was my incentive to start. And I've already patterned it out and I've started on the embroidery and I haven't been rushing because there's nowhere to wear it to right now, and I'm just enjoying working on it on the couch in the evenings. But I'm I'm about most of the way through the first panel, which is it's about 60 or 7, maybe 60 inch by about 28. Um, square is about, makes up a lattice. I had to wait so long to start this gown I wanted to do it so long I couldn't find the, the material to embroider with uh, over the years I remember looking at spoon flower and trying to create similar material like way back when spoon flower was new um, I looked at all different kinds of fake metal options I looked at real silver which was way out of my price range um, and then a few years ago, I think in 2017, I found uh, an embroidery supply company out of India that makes one millimeter flat plate out of copper that's then treated to look silver. So um, I bought pounds and pounds of that and I've been going. So I'm actually working on one of my dream dresses. Um, but other than that, there, there is one, there's a Worth gown, it's silver, uh, another early Edwardian, it's silver with stars on it that I would, I think would be great to recreate. And now, looking back, that one looks so easy, it's just got a few little stars. Anyway, sorry, I could ramble on about this for a long time. <laughs> um, what is a sewing task you love versus a sewing task you hate? I love anything repetitive that doesn't take a lot of mental capacity, like embroidery, like buttonholes, um, pleating, anything that I can kind of zone out, listen to an audiobook or have TV on in the background. Um, what I dislike is oh, like mock-ups. There's just so much pressure because once that's, if you don't do that right, it doesn't matter what you do the rest of the costume, it can just go downhill. So they're a necessary evil, but man, they're so boring. 
and it, and it's such a like having to fit it perfectly on yourself and you're kind of contorting and doing weird things to see if it might fit I could totally do without that <sighs> would I rather sew wool or silk definitely wool silk is beautiful but wool is just so easy and it's comfortable afterwards and it's temperate and it's, I don't know it's just so forgiving <sighs> Okay, would I rather go to a themed event or pick your own theme event? I actually really enjoy going to events that are themed because they push me. Um, when an opportunity comes up to go to an event that uh, I don't have anything for and it's an area I'm not necessarily into, but I wanna go, maybe there's friends or whatever, whatever reason. The challenge is so cool. Like last year I went on a trip that was all 1920s themed and I had no desire for 20s really before that. I had a couple of evening dresses from parties, but I made an entire wardrobe and now I have such an appreciation for the 20s. Like I love it. I would do 20s, no problem. Um, so yeah, the challenge, I think it really helps you grow as a dressmaker too tackling new eras. Would I rather attend a big ball or an intimate dinner? I think I would rather attend a big ball with good friends. Um, I'm lucky enough that Telly usually goes to everything with me, so I have like a built-in friend. Telly's my husband for anybody who doesn't know. Um, I talk about him all the time on Instagram. <laughs> uh, Intimate dinners are wonderful, but there's something so uh, free about a big party. If you go to a party with friends or a big event, you can come and go. You might meet new people that are interesting. Um, just more opportunities. And I don't, there, I have some friends on this side of the states that costume, but we're so all so far apart that it's it's hard to get to intimate dinner. So. Usually the only time I get to see costuming friends is at big parties. <sighs> Do you prefer to machine sew or hand sew? Um, I like them both. I don't mind doing either. But if an era is acceptable to machine sew, I will absolutely do that. Um, personally, I... I want my clothes to be as accurate as possible. But that being said, if I got invited to like go to Versailles tomorrow, I would I would whip up a dress pretty darn quick on a machine to go. <laughs> All right, do I like wigs, hair pieces, or my own hair? I love hair pieces. Um, if I can get it done with my own hair, I will totally do that. Wigs, I don't really like them. They can be a little itchy or hot. I go to a lot of hot outdoor events and so wigs, no thanks. Um, but hair piece I love. This is a hair piece. Uh, in here I've got a hair piece. Um, but my own hair incorporated over it. Um, let's see. Name five small businesses you love for costume things. So where I shop from the most if I'm looking for fabric, I do a lot of uh, Renaissance fabrics in Burnley and Trowbridge. Um, lace, I love farmhouse fabrics. They have the most beautiful assortment of like cotton, um, French laces, beautiful for Edwardian underwear or 18th century tuckers, ruffles, really nice quality stuff. Um, for all my historical shoes, definitely American Duchess. Um, Patterns, maybe. I buy a lot of patterns. Um, I like wearing history and truly Victorian. Good stuff. Pretty sure this started out as a truly Victorian. Let's see. Name five YouTubers we should all check out. This is really hard for me because I'm so new to YouTube, so new to watching it. Um, so actually, I need recommendations, so pop some in the comments because, I mean, I... I um, 
I watch some people I know personally, I watch their stuff sometimes, or if I'm looking up how to do some technique, like Burnley and Trowbridge does great, like button tutorials and hemming and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm so new to YouTube. I could totally use some recommendations, please. <sighs> Let's see. Uh, favorite color. I don't know if I had have one. Um, I like neutral colors to be around. Maybe um, a lot of my historical costumes kind of tend to have a theme uh, depending on the decade I've noticed. Um, I don't know if I necessarily have a favorite. As far as my everyday clothes lately, uh, which are mostly vintage, I've been really into red. So I think red is steadily creeping up the list. And white. If I have the chance to make a costume in white, 100%. Pearls or sparkles? I like them both. How do you pick between them? Uh, but I do have these pearl earrings on and they're from uh, the Lady Detail. And I actually won them um, last year, a couple years ago on an Instagram challenge. Um, and I believe it was the Edwardian Spring Challenge that Faces in Style does, which is going on right now. And I. I wear these for a lot of events, they're, they're great. So, Lady Detail is another small business. Mm. What is a costume trip you've dreamt of taking? Oh. Well, I was supposed to be in Williamsburg last weekend, two weekends ago, for the garden party, and it would have been my first time going in costume. Um, I've been before, but never, never dressed, and I'm so looking forward to that. I hope it, it's been rescheduled for October, and I really hope it happens, because I'm really excited. That's been a dream trip since I was a kid. Um, Venice, I love going to Venice, so going for carnival would be, it would just be so spectacular to get to walk around, like, wearing this, and nobody bats an eye. Um, like, I'm, a, I'm perfectly fine wearing vintage out and about, but... You can't really go around in a trained Edwardian evening gown everywhere. <laughs> so I would, I would love to be able to just put on whatever I want and go. Um, crowded or not, I, I like the excitement, honestly, of crowds. Um, Versailles in costume would be wonderful. Um, I've only been there with, you know, a thousand other tourists bumping me with their selfie sticks, so. Um, yeah. Anything like that would be great. Favorite cocktail. Now this one I have a definite answer. It is called The Last Word. It's a Prohibition era drink and it is equal parts gin, green chartreuse, lime juice, and Luxardo maraschino. And uh, shaken up, shaken and strained. And um, pop a Luxardo cherry in there. It's just the best. Tastes kind of like a... Um, gin margarita if you can imagine that it's limey it's sweet really good who is a costumer i'd love to meet Ooh, man that's hard um man there's so many there's so many people i interact with online that i would just love to be able to hang out with in person um and and frankly like there's so many people that i've met at events that i would just love to be able to hang out with and actually spend some time with because events are so hard you, you know you meet people you're excited it's busy there's a bunch of people I'd love to like go get cocktails with some 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 of my costuming online friends that I barely ever get to see plain or patterned um I love the aesthetic of a plain fabric like you the it gets very sculptural when you do trim it's very easy to match and work with. You're not dealing with uh, pattern matching. Plain fabrics are wonderful, but that being said, I think I have a little bit of an addiction to buying patterns. Um, there's something so thrilling to me when you find a fabric that is like the exact or just exactly what you're looking for from a certain era. It's like you struck gold. Um, and then of course, once I get them, 
I don't like cutting into them because then they're gone. <sighs> use pattern or make my own. I always use patterns if I can. Um, I don't really like drafting patterns. Um, I can and I've had to sometimes, but oh, there's so many patterns out there, whether it can be ones you buy, like that come on paper or in books you can uh, make larger. I just, what, I don't know what's going on there. Um, why make life hard? Like these things are given to you and why take the extra time to have to completely draw something, unless that's your jam, unless you're really into that, but I just personally am not. I'd rather, rather get to cutting out the fabric and sewing. Ah, what is your favorite era to wear and your favorite to make? To wear probably early Edwardian. Like I feel most me in it. Like I love this. Just I love the fluff. I love the the frill and the exaggeration, all the little details and you just can't help but feel fabulous when you wear Edwardian clothes. Um, but my favorite to sew that's tough because, I mean, all the eras have fun things about them, but I think my first love was definitely 18th century sewing. I love how the garments are constructed and how forgiving the construction process is. It just, it makes sense. Like if you screw up, you just piece it or you just drape it on the body and cut. Um, I've always liked that. Ah, last one. What is one thing we don't know about you? Well, <laughs> you don't know <laughs> that my skirt's over there. <laughs> I'm only wearing the bodice. <laughs> this dress. I want to go somewhere in it. I got worn to costume college and then put away until a couple weeks ago when I needed it for a little video for Instagram, but I love this dress. All right, friends. Well, thanks for sticking around. Um, leave me suggestions for YouTube people to follow and watch and, um, I look forward to making more videos. Thanks for watching.